Today, let's look at a well thought through system of testing our learner's ability to read. This system of errorless testing was developed by Patricia Olwine at the University of Washington decades ago. She worked extensively with our learners with Down syndrome over many years and developed this three-step system of testing our learner's ability to read. I give the details about how to do this technique in my book, Whole Child Reading. And when I certify trainers to teach my whole child reading method, I make sure that they know how to do this skillfully. The three steps go from easy to difficult, and they are in this order, matching, selecting, and naming. Matching a word to a word, selecting a word from a field of two or more words, and finally, naming a word. The best way to show you how this is done is to let you watch it. So let's watch Lynette test Joey, her student. Lynette is one of my certified trainers and a special ed teacher as well. Hi, Joey. Are you ready to play a game? Yeah. Okay. You're good at this game. This is the word little. Can you find little? Good job. This is the word big. Can you find big? Good job. This is the word yellow. Can you find yellow? Flower. Yes. This is the word go. Can you find go? Good job. This is the word C. Can you find C? Good job. This is the word I. Can you find I? Good job. Okay. Now we're going to play one more game. Two more games, actually. Okay? Alrighty. Can you hand me the word yellow? What one's yellow? Good job, Joey. Okay, thank you. Can you hand me the word little? Good job. Can you hand me the word go? Good job. Can you hand me the word see? Good job. Can you hand me the word big? Which one's the word big? Good job. Oh, are you going to hand it to me? Oh, thank you. Can you hand me the word I? I. Good job. Oh, can you read these words for me? Yes. All right. What's this word? I. I. Big. Big. C. C. Go. Go. Little. Little. Hello. Yellow. High five. Good job, Joey. Yay. So we saw Lynette test Joey using matching, selecting, and naming. Now, Joey is a more advanced student, so Lynette asked her to match from a field of six. In Joey's case, that was fine, but for a beginning student, you want to keep it to two or three cards from a field of two or three cards until they have more experience when you're asking them to select a card. So keep that in mind. You want to match the test with the level of the learner. So that's how we start with testing. And the errorless part of it is this. We give them prompts. We might give them verbal prompts, sounding out the first letter, the first sound of the first letter, or we might tap the right answer, the right card. We want above all to give them the idea that they can succeed. So we give these prompts to encourage them. And as that when the prompts are no longer needed, of course we fade them out. Another tool we can use in prompting is the magic decoding card that I've made several videos about. So if you haven't seen those, go to my YouTube channel and search for decoding card or magic card. All right, so that is a very handy, very quick way of helping them to recognize the right answer. As I mentioned, this three-step strategy of matching, selecting, naming was developed by Patricia Olwine. I'd like to add a fourth strategy to that, and that is generalizing. Our learners need to be able to generalize a word to recognize it anywhere in any setting. We find that very often, even if the learner can recognize a word on a card, let's say a flashcard, they're not able to recognize it in a new sentence. So what to do? That's where personal pages come in. If you haven't seen my videos on how to create personal pages, please check that out on my YouTube video, search for personal pages. Personal pages are an amazing tool that will come to your rescue in this case. 
They're quick, easy, takes you five or 10 minutes to create. There are no pictures and they will quickly help you find out as you are creating a new text with sentence structure that is not the same as the children are used to, new sentence structure. We'll quickly find out if they've actually mastered that word, if they can generalize it, or if they are simply used to associating it with a picture or a sentence they, that they have previously learned repeatedly. So using these errorless testing techniques, we can find out how much our learners have already mastered and at the same time discover vocabulary that isn't quite mastered yet and that is still in progress. It's a wonderful way to test without undue pressure and at the same time to encourage our learners that they can do this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.